All right, boss. I had to remake this uh, video. Well, actually, I'm gonna upload the other one to uh, to YouTube, and then after you watch it, um, after about a week, I'll delete it or whatever after you get it. Uh, so, anyways, I gotta take apart this. So, you need to use like either a pair of needle nose pliers to stick the nut in here to pull this thing actually out um, and down from it. I mean, um, you deal with cars, so you're pretty much a mechanic. I would try to take this off. But honestly, the way that it is in there, um, you have to heat it up with uh, a heat gun because I had to use red Loctite because it kept backing out um, on that. So I'm not even going to bother. I'm just going to take this whole assembly off. I do have a spare one of these um, and you can bolt it on left or right. So I've taken, I'm going to take those two off and then I'm just going to tie wrap these things up. I'm going to take the bottom. I'm going to see if I can leave the shocks on the front, but I had to take them off the back just because they're so... I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty big, right? So I got these things booted up here. So these things, they're not like normal cups. There's actually a cut. Like they're not cut out straight. There's actually a ring around. So you actually have to pop it in and down. Um, you'll know what I mean if you were to slide it. I would take this thing off, but I'll let you deal with that because it's an absolute pain in the ass and uh, you have to heat them up with a heat gun. It's like I do have spares here. These are brand new hostels. They're very expensive. Um, but if you don't heat them up, you will rip them um, because they aren't... They're not very, um, they're pretty rigid until they start to actually work in. So if you just heat them up with a heat gun, um, I'll actually make a video on how to actually assemble these. There's actually actually a YouTube video on either Hostel or um, Fat Dad. will show you how to use those using a pair of needle nose pliers. Um, and same thing here, I tie wrap this one up. I just noticed that this is actually ripped. But, I mean, that was after a year and a half, so I'm going to leave that on there, and that way you can just replace it and kind of learn as you go. Um, so these I'm just going to tie wrap up and so that they don't move the, the exhaust. I'm going to get the other coupler. Um, I'm not sure if I have another one of these rings. You can get them at Home Depot for about a dollar each. I think the only one I have is might be too small. Um, but I do have the spring for this. I find, actually, once you get this thing bolted on to here with the two of them, like one on this side, one on here. You don't need the spring at all. Um, the spring's kind of a pain in the ass, but um, these exhaust couplers, don't be buying them from DDM. Just go to like Greg's or your your um, automotive store. Bring this pipe in with you and just look for some silicone tubing. Um, I got uh, like two meters of it for about 15 bucks from Greg's distributor here in Calgary. So um, I'll give you a brand new spark plug for this. This is just a, a piston stop. Um, I'm going to take the leave the pull start actually off. I'm going to find a, a brand new one. Or a rebuild, at least, or something that's actually better than the, the shitty ones that I have. Um, and then the air filter, the pre-filter, I have it kicking around here, is this one. Because um, I need the other one for mine. Um, I can give you another set of filters. This one is oiled. Um, I just use the Horizon Hobby oil. You can probably use canola oil or whatever. Motorcycle fil uh, foam filter stuff works pretty good, but it's just kind of hard to clean off in the sink. Um, it's called Bell Rays. You can get that stuff. It works pretty good. I don't use it. I do have it, but, um, this thing here is bolted down instead of pinned through. I didn't like the slop in it like this one. So I just used some bolts and, uh, stuck it through like that instead. Um, if you really want, just let me know. I can 3d print you some. Um, they do, they do have them there on the, the website so I can print some for you. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to adjust all this stuff to which, um, what you're going to need it pretty much is good to go now from what I had it but back here you're going to have to adjust the brake a little bit more um, I did figure out what the binding issue was in the back turned out after well if you watch the big dirty 2015 however I, after I destroyed this I bent where my thumb is this plate and it was actually catching it wasn't the brakes it wasn't this it wasn't the diff it was actually this plate was slightly bent this way so it was hitting on the gear on the inside which is actually an all steel and this is uh, steel as well. There is no slipper clutch on this. Um, there is a diff. Um, I do did include some, uh, not the bearings for it. Um, what, the, what are they called there? The seals for it. Uh, this diff is kind of a weird how to put it together. But join one of those uh, HBI Baja groups. I'm going to stay in them just because um, I like these things and I know a lot about them. Um, I run this thing really loose. So it's like 10,000 or 5,000 weight oil in the back. Because um, if you have this thing locked up. You can put a locker if you want. Um, this motor definitely won't destroy it, but guys who go with big blocks, like I had my 34 in this thing, it's in my low C now, and it, uh, oh man, it was just undrivable. Um, so Everett, I don't know if you watch those videos and know the fifth scale boss, he basically gave me a little pointer. What this thing is, you, uh, you fatten this thing up on these dials here, so basically fattening means you're not leaning it out, you're actually making it too rich. 
That way at least it keeps the motor cooler and there's not so much power in the back because uh, if you're racing these things, um, what good is power if you can't control the damn thing, right? But if you just want to impress some people, don't lean it out too much. The settings I have on this, I will revert back to stock because um, if you were to start this thing and run it pretty much in Montreal, I think that's where you live, it's pretty much at sea level, you will blow the motor up probably after one tank because in Calgary, we're a kilometer from sea level. So these motors have to run a lot leaner than you normally would say in California or in Toronto. Like, I mean, Toronto is like, what, 100 meters from sea level too? I don't know what it is for Montreal, but I know that altitude affects these things greatly. Um, and another thing, if you're new to this, troubleshooting these things. Get this thing started. If you're having issues, first things first, unplug this cable. Unplug your, your kill switch because sometimes it's the kill switch that's causing an issue. And um, maybe run it without the kill switch first just to get used to it. Um, and just always have this button which does stick. I can get, yeah, there it comes out now. Um, we're actually going to start putting rip cords on these. But if you're running it in a field around kids, I suggest have this thing tried and true and tested the kill, the kill switch on it. Because nothing you want less than this thing taking off on you uncontrollable towards a bunch of kids that are watching this thing. Um... Yeah, that's uh, I had that happen to me once. Um, it wasn't actually not that bad. I managed just to shut my radio off, and my friend uh, didn't have it done, and his low C five T went flying into a wall through kids playing soccer. Um, so when there was actually kids in the park, I just leave. I don't even bother, um, just because I don't want them bo bothering me. Also, too, you know, um, it's kind of saying it's kind of embarrassing, but I mean, you're playing with a four thousand dollar toy in front of these kids who can barely afford lunch. <laughs> at least where I live anyways, I live in Temple, which is like uh, a pretty, I guess it's not, they say it's brown town because, you know, it's just the way that it is, I guess. I don't mind living here, actually, I think it's really nice, I like the people I live with, so. Anyways, that's besides the point. So the front end of this thing is kind of weird. You don't need this, you can get a different um, turtle racing one, this is the fast lane machine. Um, I have this on there specifically only to stop these screws from bending. So um, you can see how it's put together. I'm going to leave it all together. Um, I had to drill this actually out right here. So when you take this thing apart, see all those screw holes? The ones that they're in are actually drilled out. I ripped the threads out only because I was ripping them trying to get them in. And then after a while, the way that this thing is designed is that if you don't have enough aftermarket parts, sometimes nothing really works. Okay, so and including the fact that this thing is all fast lane machine with the stock arms here they just leave these things so i just made this little fancy thing which only has one one setting you can see right there if i didn't have that what would have happened so i just use that to protect the tops of these i do have um dark sole tops that are all aluminum billet aluminum with the the the, the little rubber bushings down there they don't make them anymore they're very hard to come by so if you can find the the rubber grommets like I have a few, but they'll maybe last you one season. I mean, maybe a few, four or five tanks, depending on how, how much you actually drive it. To be honest with you, I probably only put on this thing maybe four tanks total since I've owned it. And I've went through four pipes just because I like this one. And this one fits with the cage on it. Um, it's pretty much brand new. I just bought it last year. There's no dents on it. There's a bit of scratching. But I would honestly, if I were you, take this thing, take it off, take the header off as well. Take it to a place in town there for you to get it uh, ceramic coated. Um, that's what this was done. This is a uh, uh, booster. It's kind of dented up. This is for the low C5T, but this has been ceramic coated by a place called Top Gun Coatings. It's about 75 bucks to get it coated. Um, but this whole pipe cost me almost $400 Canadian. All said and done, but I bought it in 2016 when the dollar was absolute shit. So um, this whole thing here running now is... Pretty much almost every upgrade except for here. You can get some of these ones that are different. Fat Turtle, or sorry, Team Fat Dad makes parts for here. And on the inside, there's a brace that goes across there. And here, they also make one. Fat Dad does for that. That looks really nice. I left it all stock purple because I kind of like the purple um, on the back. Um, this thing breaks a lot. I went through about four of these things after a few bad flips. Um, I was honestly contemplating 3D printing a new design for this out of carbon fiber to make this bigger and wider so it doesn't rip because it just rips right there. Um, but other than that, it's about all I can think of. The shock tower, you just nut and bolt right through it. Like this, right? Um, these are not, this is stock, but this is actually Team Chase right here. You can get metal ones if you want. Um, but that just means more weight on the back and they mean it to have more shock. Um, this thing is already as it is ass end heavy like crazy and it's so front end light 
That's why I can run this really not so good steering servo. I mean, it's okay, but it's not really the greatest, but you don't need to because there's no weight on the front. You'll see when you get it going and driving it, this thing just pulls up. And uh, this this way the steering system works with this turtle, this turtle racing and these IRC arms, they are, uh, it's good, man. Like, I mean, these things bend right here. So if you can find the Fonzie ones, you know, um, Fonzie RT is from England. You might not know who he is. Maybe not if he still makes them. Um, they're basically, instead of these male, they thread into here. This is actually a threaded rod. And then these go over top of it that are all metal. Um, you can probably find it even in imperial measurements and, um, uh, you know, from a store there in town or whatever, in a major city, you might be able to find something. But I have enough spares on these to last you a while, including some original stock parts, which are like right here. This is so for the short arms, if you want to go back to short. I don't have them anymore. I actually got rid of them. Here's some seals. This is your five hole. Um, these shocks are the best. I bought them here in town off a guy. Um, I definitely would suggest getting a new front end ones. So, um, nothing else is for the Baja, if I'm not mistaken, no. I do only got a couple sets of, one set of tires and maybe some spares for the rear. I know this video is a little long, but it's okay. So these, oh, I'm sorry about this, buddy, but I've never got these things to work properly. I don't know what it is, whether it was a mix up between Pro Line with the inserts. These are stock HPI foams. This is all Pro Line, everything. And I could never, ever get this thing mounted properly. I even tried plates. I tried making a press. Um, I just said, you know what, fuck it. If you can figure it out, good for you. I'll give them to you. Um, but they came apart here. I don't know if it's the wrong size. But they don't even make trenchers anymore, man. So these things might be worth something. <laughs> I mean, other than probably 60 bucks a piece. Because brand new tires for these fifth scales. After duty, taxes and exchange for a brand new set, you're looking at about $80 to $95 a tire to your door and installed on the vehicle. So they are expensive. But those are the rears. And I have just a couple sets of stock fronts. Um, I think these are the fronts here. Yeah, they're not really the greatest. These ones are just pro line blockades. They're a little beat up. But they're okay. I'll give them to you anyways. And then, um, one of these drawers is the book for this. So that'll be with it as well. So you have, um, see there's the body. It'll show you all the mounting hardware that you need to run that body on top of it. Kind of give you a little bit of a rundown. This was actually a complete kit. Like, um, my buddy John Duthie, OBR Johnny we call him. He I bought this thing off him 2016. It was um, basically just put together in his house with a whole bunch of parts. So pretty much the only thing I did to it was I had the extended arms, and that's it. Everything else was pretty much him. Um, I paid 1250 running with a different motor in it that I later well blew up, but that's my fault. So, um, but yeah, no, it's a decent deal. I did get the extra battery box just because it's taller. So you can get this in a billet aluminum. There's a really interesting one out there from, I believe, Rovin. I know it's a knockoff, but um, you know what? They have a really interesting design. I have not to try it yet, but this servo, instead of down here laying down, it's actually in the middle, um, and it's facing down. And then the, this receiver box is a lot smaller. Um, but, I mean, it's what you get for the space that you have. Um, a lot of guys convert these to electric. Um, I've seen them. They're pretty cool. You can get in-wheel brushless motors from um, Stealth Motors. They're actually from uh, Quebec, I believe. Montreal, maybe. Somewhere out there. Um, but yeah, they bolt onto here. They actually replace the hex. And they are in-wheel brushless motors. So each wheel gets its own motor. You can get this thing going up to 200 kilometers an hour. I've seen. Um, Ted Nab is the company that sells them. But I believe the motors are actually from Stealth. Um, but yeah, that's... You can decide that if you really want to go insane speed. I don't know what I mean. To grenade, this thing would actually suck. <laughs> I had a set of um, fat um, tires for the back. Um, I'll actually give them to you too. They are um, tarmac busters. They're HPIs. But they're the wide ones. They're like this wide, dude. They're specifically for the, the when this thing is a, a buggy. Not the, the, the Kraken style. The 5B. 
<laughs> and this thing is insane on concrete. I mean, I was with a different motor, but this thing is just a stock 29. It's more than what you need. I mean, there's plenty of power in this thing, and really, it's all tuning, right? And I was running, not in this, but I was running T4 fuel, which is about 105 octane with Castor 927. That's what I use. Don't be cheaping out on the oil just because these things, um, you know, you wouldn't put cheap oil in a in a Mercedes, right? And I know this thing's on a Mercedes, but, I mean, these motors, everything's expensive as hell. A brand new motor for these things is very expensive. Canadian, shipped to your door. Five, six hundred dollars. Five, six hundred dollars, sorry. I got indigestion. But anyways, that's it for now. See ya, buddy.